keep water out of the system and in some places that means with plywood and plastic that is the immediate goal Danny Perlstein noticed this work in Inwood by his home station, the Dykeman Street A train. And in July, when the, that big storm came, seven or eight inches, uh, the A train flooded really badly from right here. But by the time Ida rolled around, they had completed a lot of the work and they added up, they added some plywood and sandbags on top. And the A train was actually one of the better lines. Um, so the one train flooded from a hilltop, you know, a couple miles away. But the A train was able to come back online, I think, as quickly as any of the lines. Covering grates, raising station entrances. That's something to do in the short term. The MTA has installed some doors that can close over subway station entrances. But they're not at many locations in a system with 472 stations, the majority underground. The MTA says that is what they're looking at doing around the city. The flash flooding implications, which are a little harder to pinpoint where it's going to be, um, but that's what we're going to study, and we fully expect to be investing in, in mitigations. Reporters questioned the acting MTA chairman Wednesday. The big question, how soon will they be able to incorporate larger flood projects? It may take, you know, a year to have it formally incorporated, but we're going to figure out how to pay for that stuff in the current capital plan for the, the, the actions we want to take on those especially vulnerable stations. Never saw that before, no, of course not. Of course not. There are some pumps down there, but they were overwhelmed. Yeah, so, you know, there's only so much you can do. Neighbors and riders don't want to see a repeat of this. They're hoping the city will do its part, too. Make the ground a lot spongier, help that water soak in. It won't end up in the subway, which has to play act like a sewer system.